back to my channel everyone I'm Megan Remedy holistic nutritionist and I have been away for a bit because of the farm internet and that's why I dressed up today a little bit because I've been on a farm for the past few weeks and the girl in me needed to feel girly so I apologize for not doing a video for a couple weeks but today's video is going to be me reading a article that my mom discovered in the local farm newspaper so just for a little context if you guys don't know my parents recently bought a farm in ontario I'm not going to tell you exactly where because there's too many creeps on the internet but anyways so she sent me this article and she wanted to know my opinion and honestly it is very disturbing to me that this is going on and no one is doing anything about it um, and we're gonna get into that but before we do if you're new here make sure you subscribe you're gonna love me so I'm gonna read the article first and then give my little opinion so for context if anyone's new to the channel or the video and they don't know I was vegan for four years recently um, I think it's been seven months now I started incorporating animal products into my diet again after a very long um, battle in my own head because I have a lot of health problems and I have pretty much tried everything. I'm a holistic nutritionist so I'm aware of you know how the body works and nutrition, also herbs and a lot of natural alternative medicine therapies. So I had pretty much tried everything to get my health back on track before I tried animal products. Within hours, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I noticed a difference. So I'll link those up here. You can go watch those if you're interested. But my point of all this is that I could no longer go through with the vegan lifestyle. My body would not let me go through with it. So I had to make a decision. And post-veganism, I couldn't go back to the same animal products that I had learned everything about. I could only move forward and learning what I learned and accepting the fact that my body could not be on a vegan diet I decided to seek out ethical animal products I decided to immerse myself in learning about animal agriculture and farming on a small scale and really learn about how these things are done in and around this time my parents had bought a farm um, this was about last year when they bought it, but because of the seasons, they couldn't really do anything until this year. So anyways, I have been researching farming methods and different animals, the best animals for a small homestead, etc. And among this research, I realized that animals are crucial to human life on Earth, crucial to all life on Earth, crucial to soil health. Um, and animal husbandry has been around since the dawn of time and we cannot ignore the benefits of animal agriculture. So vegans should care about this as well because if we don't have healthy soil, which ruminant animals make the soil healthy and nutrient dense, we don't have these ruminant animals then we won't have healthy vegetables if the soil is not healthy the vegetables will not be healthy it's a circle of life and so no matter if you're on the vegan side or the carnivore side you should care about animal husbandry animal agriculture and the health of the soil so the article is titled why is ontario dropping charges on trespassing animal activists Open letter to Ontario Attorney General Caroline Mulroney. I write to you as an Ontarian concerned with agriculture issues and a member of the Ontario Bar. 
This letter follows today's May 1st decision by the Middlesex Crown Attorney's Office to drop break and entering charges, break, enter, and mischief charges against Miss Jennifer McQueen, reportedly for there being no reasonable prospect of conviction. Miss McQueen admits that she broke into a pork farm and stole an animal. Not only has she posted videos and pictures and boasted about her actions on social media, but she has and continues to encourage others to follow her lead. I'm outraged by the decision to drop the charges despite obvious evidence to support a conviction. This follows similar decisions in Ontario jurisdictions to seek no penalty against Mr. Malcolm, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Klimowicz, <clears throat> I'll put it up on the screen, after he broke into five different mink farms and also posted video boasted about this exploits on social media, about his exploits on social media. <clears throat> The same vague excuse was provided by the Durham Crown Attorney's Office that there was no reasonable prospect of conviction. Once again, I am at a loss to understand how the prosecutions of these crimes are not being pursued. Recently, a group of activists brazenly trespassed into an Ontario dairy farm in broad daylight. They refused to leave the property and stole dead stock. A larger mass trespass took place just days ago in Abbotsford, BC, where approximately 50 activists occupied a farm for several hours. There are allegations of assault in that case. The same thing is happening in other parts of the world, and such flouting of the law will get only worse in Ontario if nothing is done to punish the perpetrators. What we are missing is nothing short of a breakdown of law and order. No matter what your beliefs happen to be, it is unacceptable to provide radical activists with a free pass to break the law. Farmers are living in fear. They should be treated with the same respect that any victim deserves. All farmers should be confident that authorities will protect them like any other citizen deserves. like any other crime victim deserves. All farmers should be confident that the authorities will protect them like any other citizen of this province. All of this goes without saying that these incidents also obviously constitute serious biosecurity issues. I therefore implore you to take whatever steps are necessary to ensure that our laws are being enforced with adequate vigor impartiality, concern for deter deterrence, and a proper concern for victims. Farmers, in these cases, thank you for your attention, and I would welcome hearing how Ontario will address these issues. Curtis Andrews, Ottawa, Ontario. The first thing that I wanted to start with is that a crime is a crime, what's wrong is what's wrong and no matter what your beliefs are breaking and entering is a crime stealing is a crime and my reasoning would be that if you think someone's doing something wrong in the house next door if you think someone is beating their child in the house next door would you A, call the cops or the Child Protective Services or would you go and steal the child so obviously you would not go steal the child because that is illegal so I don't get how this is ethical, this is right or this is vegan. This crap has turned into this crappy activism has turned into breaking the law and violence I'm all for peaceful protest I'm all for free speech and sharing your opinion but breaking into someone's property and 
stealing their property. Yes, these animals are their property. That is a crime that is wrong and that is none of your business. If you are an activist out there stealing animals, you deserve to be prosecuted the same way as someone stealing a necklace, someone stealing a car. You should not get a free pass. If you think that the conditions of this farm are wrong, are harming the animal, then you call the authorities. Animal Protective Services. You call someone and the farm will be investigated, but you do not go steal an animal. Like you have no idea these farmers' positions. You have no idea. Um, when you're on a small farm, the budget is tight. Someone stealing one animal could be a whole year's worth of food for you and your family. Um, especially if it was something like a bigger animal like a cow. But my point is is that that family could be going hungry for that long. And this animal is going to be a lot more satiating and provide a lot more nutrition to that family than crops would. Crops are a lot harder to get calories and satiation for yourself and your family when you are self-sustaining. When you are living on a farm, you are providing food for yourself and your family, that is a lot more sustaining than a vegan diet. So the nerve of vegan activists to go onto someone else's property and steal an animal is beyond me. It's just they've lost their mind. They need some animal fat because this is not okay. And if you're a normal vegan out there listening, you need to make videos about this. This is not okay, but because you guys let these things happen because you guys let vegans get away with a lot of crap that they should not get away with people lump all vegans into one category so if you're a normal vegan out there and you care about not being lumped into this category you need to make videos about what's right and wrong in the vegan community as well and i really don't see a lot of those videos going around Activism is great. Activism is fine. Everybody should be allowed to engage in whatever peaceful form of activism that they would like, but you have no right to break into someone's property and steal their animals. It's absolutely ridiculous that this is known as something that is heroic in the vegan community. It's disgusting. Small farmers are not the problem. Small farmers are doing it right. You should be thankful for small farmers because one day the vegan diet is going to make you sick and you're going to need properly raised animal products with dense nutrition in them to get better. And you're going to wish that you didn't fight to outlaw small family farms. So um, that's why I'm so passionate about quality animal products now, small farms, um, and proper practices because these animal products, these very nutrient dense animal products saved my life. I was in so much pain and suffering from the vegan diet and these animal products brought me back to life. So imagine you're a vegan and you're fighting against all of this. You're fighting against small family farms because you're way too radical to realize that the problem is factory farming and factories in general, corporations in general. It's not the small family farms that are raising enough animals just to care for their family and a few friends or neighbors. Like these people are the real heroes. They're keeping these practices alive that are going to keep you alive. So imagine you are a vegan and you're heavily into it and you're protesting and you're doing all these activism things and you steal animals and this and that and you put them on a sanctuary whatever you're doing and then one day you get sick and nothing works just imagine just open your mind here for me you get sick and nothing vegan works but you've already outlawed all animal agriculture you've already outlawed small farms there's no more animal products left then what? Then what do you do for your health? 
So that was something that was extremely scary to me and was a reality when I realized that the vegan diet wasn't serving me anymore and it was actually causing me harm. Um, I realized that the rights of animals was getting out of control in the vegan activist movement. There's actual vegans who make videos saying that having a pet, like a dog or a cat, is not vegan. And when I started seeing that stuff happening, I was like, okay, I can't even relate to that. That is not what I'm about. Um, of course, I want to treat animals with respect. I love animals. My dog means the world to me. And this little guy wanted to join me. He, I swear he knows when I'm filming because I have like the ring light and I sit in this specific spot. So every time he knows I'm filming, he asks to come up on my lap. Um, usually when I'm doing interviews with people, I let him, but I kind of have to focus for these videos. Okay. Can you let me focus or you want to stay up? Hmm? I love you. You good boy. You good boy. But I would not consider animals to be equal to humans whatsoever. And so when I realized that I needed animal products for survival, that's when everything really shifted. So imagine that happens to you one day. Just keep your mind open because I know a lot of vegans will say that'll never happen. Um, I feel great on the vegan diet and I'll always feel great. That's what a lot of the people on my channel thought when they uh, first went vegan. A lot of the ex-vegan interviews that I do, everybody thought that. So just keep an open mind um, because it may save your life one day. And you may want to rethink going after these small farmers because they're not the problem. The factory farmers are. But the problem for that is, is that these vegan activists, they can't break into factory farms because their security is so heavy. They have these barbed wire fences that are very tall that you can't get past. They have surveillance footage around the whole thing. They have security guards, etc. They can't break into these places. So they pick on the small guys. They pick on the small farmers because they don't have the security that a factory farm has, which is completely disgusting. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, if you are if you are trying to make a change I think you really need to rethink your method another thing that I noticed in Ontario is that there is this type of activism where the vegans will run up to the trucks as they stop in front of the factory farms because they can't get in because of the security they'll stop and they will feed them or give them water through the holes of the truck They'll stick a water bottle in or they'll stick a camera and take pictures. And um, there was a big case on this too in Canada. I will link an article below about it or a video. And they will pretty much rush the truck and rush all the holes in the truck to see what they can see and what they can do. I get it um, from a compassion standpoint because a lot of the animals are um, overheating and they need water, especially in the summer months when they're doing that because there's no, they're packed very tightly and there's no air conditioning. I get all of that. That's why I am for small farms. I'm for farms that don't put their animals through that because not every farm ships a bunch of animals tightly packed together. Like people don't do that um, on small family farms. So, that's why I support these farms. But my point of this story was is that I noticed in Ontario, they started putting tarps over the side so nobody can get into the holes, nobody can see into the holes. The only holes were at the back of the truck and a little bit at the front, at the top. So now these tarps are covering the whole entire truck, blocking off the air, blocking off the circulation, blocking off the only breeze or coolness or oxygen that they had because of the vegan activists, because they obviously aren't gonna buy a whole new trucks, so they just put a tarp over the sides. So essentially you're causing more harm to these animals by your activism 
and you're not realizing it. I think that there needs to be a better um, method put in place than bombarding these animals because you tend to make the situation worse. Um, you know, you don't think it's stressful for a farm family pig to be kidnapped from someone that they don't know and put in conditions that they don't know. Um, it's just ridiculous. So I don't subscribe to the idea that it's wrong to raise an animal properly and then harvest it when you're ready, when your family's ready and needs meat. Um, if we do not have any protection of private land, if we do not have the right to animal husbandry, if we do not have the government protecting small family farms like they would protect any other citizen, we are in a very deep and dark place as a human race. If somebody can break into your property and steal something that they want just because they think that you're not treating it right, because this could be your child too. So vegans say that um, they want animals to be as equal to humans as humans treat other humans. So in that case, if you think it's right to break onto somebody's farm, if animals are equal to humans, then you think it's okay to break onto someone's farm and steal their child if you're breaking onto someone's farm and stealing their animal or their pig. I really don't get the vegan logic. I think that these people are out for attention. Um, I don't think normal vegans are out there stealing animals. If you are out there stealing animals and you think you're normal, you need to go see a psychiatrist or a counselor. Everybody should care about this issue. Everybody should care about what's going on because we need healthy soil to be healthy and ruminant animals give back to the soil. If we if small farmers are no longer protected by the law, by intruders and trespassers, there will be no natural food left. The way that the food industry is going is very scary. The amount of chemicals, pesticides, natural flavors, yellow number sevens, red number fours in the food system is disgusting and because I'm a nutritionist I look at food different I look at labeled food different when I walk into a grocery store um, I pretty much just see chemicals 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 no matter where I look besides obviously like the the um, fresher sections but even then those foods are still not safe in commercial grocery stores. I'm going to be doing other videos about that in the future and I have a few videos already on my channel. If you would like to check those out, I will link them below. But my point is, is that if we are no longer allowed to have the right to protect our small family farm, animal husbandry, um, we're doomed pretty much. And it's not a joke because food matters. Food is what fuels you. Food is what makes you healthy. Without your health, you have nothing. And I know vegans don't think animal products are healthy, but um, that's just not the reality. That's just not the truth. Whole food animal products are healthy. Um, I've seen it help people time and time again especially long-term vegans that need to come back to life. So if you don't have access to these foods, whole food animal products, if everything becomes genetically modified, if everything becomes 
packaged, if everything becomes vegan and we're no longer have any rights to have a farm and have that farm be protected by the law, it's going to get bad. I don't even want to think of a world like that, but clearly that is what these vegan activists want. They would rather animals as pets than animals and humans being a part. They would rather animals as pets and to remove themselves from the cycle of nature and eat synthetic food and live in synthetic ways than insert themselves back into nature and live at one with animals in the cycle of life. Because in order to be vegan, you need supplements, at least B12. So you could not be vegan in nature. You could not be vegan in the jungle. You could not be vegan unless you go and buy your B12 supplement and then you come back to the jungle or you come back to your farm. So um, you're essentially removing yourself from nature and from the natural cycle of life. This is this whole, this thing is just so disturbing to me. I can't even begin to discuss how scary this is. I really want to know you guys' opinion. I really want to know what you think about this article, what you think about these activism cases. Activism, I use that term lightly because it is a criminal offense to break into someone's property and steal their property. It's not activism. Activism is you protesting on the corner like a good little girl and boy. Also guys, consider supporting me in a few different ways. So one of those ways could be booking a consultation with me on my website. Another one of those ways could be supporting me on my Patreon. And a third one of those ways could be ordering your professional supplements through my online dispensary. All the links will be in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video if you like it. Make sure to share it if it would help anybody. And make sure to subscribe if you're new. Comment below what you think about the content.